Good evening, my friends. Happy Monday to all of you. A very big day is coming up for millions of low income households and Social Security recipients. The Internal Revenue Service has just released an important announcement. The federal government has confirmed that there may be an extra $1,400 available for retirees and families to claim. Friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. To hear about all of these details. Also, I will be giving away a $50 Walmart gift card every day during this month of December. If you would like to enter these giveaways, simply click and like several of my videos and please comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, the more likely your chances of winning these giveaways. The IRS has started sending out letters to about 9 million households that may have missed out on several crisis-related tax refunds and stimulus checks, which may include the third round of stimulus payments that delivered $1,400 to individuals, $2,800 to couples, and an additional $1,400 for each dependent. The tax agency is contacting taxpayers who are not required to file an annual federal income tax return, usually because they do not earn enough income to tax. It is a category that can include a significant number of retirees. Of the 65 million U.S. citizens receiving Social Security, 53.3 million are retirees, with about one out of every four older adults, depending on Social Security benefits, for at least 90% of their income. According to the Census Bureau study, that computes to about 13 million retirees who would not have been required to file a 2021 tax return. So if you're part of that number, claiming your missed stimulus check benefit is simple. All you have to do is file a 2021 tax return. The Internal Revenue Service advises that the fastest and easiest way to receive a refund is to file a return electronically and then choose direct deposit. Filers can use popular tax softwares, online services, or a tax advisor. It should be noted that the last round of stimulus payments were limited to individuals with adjusted gross incomes of $75,000 or less. They were entitled to the full $1,400, which was reduced for those making more, with individuals reporting $80,000 receiving no payment. IRS also notes that non-filers also could have missed out on the expanded child tax credit, which can be worth as much as $3,600 per child or the Earned Income Tax Credit, which can be as much as $1,502 for workers with no qualifying children, and $3,618 for those with one child. For the Child Tax Credit, individuals who earn less than $12,500 or $25,000 for couples can file a simplified tax return as well. The bottom line is that the IRS may owe you money based on the crisis-related stimulus funds that you may have not received. Many who did not receive the money to which they were entitled may not had to have filed tax returns or also may have missed credits related to child care. Friends, the keyword for this video is Rainy River. If you would like to enter the next Walmart gift card giveaway, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below this keyword, which is Rainy River, and additional keywords of any video of mine that you watch. And do make sure, friends, that you're also subscribed to my channel. Remember, friends, that the more videos we watch and then comment the keyword on, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. The faith of the Biden administration sweeping student loan forgiveness plan now rests with the Supreme Court. According to legal and higher education experts, that may be bad news for borrowers. The highest court decided to take the case after the U.S. Department of Justice filed an emergency application asking the justices to lift the injunction on its forgiveness plan that had been issued by the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Eighth Circus in St. Louis at the request of six GOP-led states. The justices, who will decide whether or not that the president's debt relief policy causes harm to the plaintiffs or is an overreach of executive authority, said they would hear oral arguments 
in February. In August of this year, President Biden announced that the U.S. Department of Education would deliver student loan forgiveness of up to $20,000 for tens of millions of Americans. The nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office estimates the plan will cost about $400 billion. Long before the president acted, Republicans had criticized the student loan forgiveness as a handout to well-off college graduates. They also argued that the president did not have the power to forgive consumer debt on his own without authorization from Congress. At least six lawsuits have been brought against the president's plan. The administration closed its portal where borrowers could apply for the relief last month, although 26 million people had already requested it. For a number of reasons, some experts predict that the Supreme Court will rule against President Biden. Beyond the popularity of its debt relief plan, the Biden administration insists that's acting within the law, pointing out the HEROES Act of 2003 grants the Education Secretary the authority to waive regulations which are related to student loans during a national emergency. The United States has been operating under an emergency declaration since March 2020. However, lawyers for the GOP-led states argue that the administration should not be able to use a public health crisis to issue such a sweeping policy. But yet a group of borrower advocacy groups in a recent brief to the U.S. Supreme Court said student debt forgiveness was essential to the country's recovery from this crisis. So dear friends, what are your thoughts on this? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Well, my beautiful and awesome friends, this is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this evening. Thank you, my dear friends, for joining me here every day. And I want you all to know that I sincerely appreciate every single one of you. Friends, I'll be announcing a new winner for today's Walmart gift card giveaway in a video later today. So please stay tuned for the keywords and do stay tuned for that video. Thank you and have a wonderful and blessed Monday. From Michigan, Ms. Talib for five minutes for her questions. Thank you so much, Chairman. Uh, I know that whenever we experience an economic crisis, it's the budgets of states and cities that are hit the hardest. And I've seen that firsthand, uh, the devastating impact of the bankruptcy of the city of Detroit and the impact it had on its residents and also the retirees. So last year, despite more than 1.5 million public sector layoffs across the country, the Fed's municipal lending facility only purchased two municipal bonds, amounting to less than 1% of the facility's capacity. And I know the Brookings Institute did find that the municipal lending facility's initial eligibility excluded countless communities like mine, including not only Detroit, but Atlanta, Baltimore, Boston, Pittsburgh, uh, uh, metro statistics areas. And so meanwhile, the Fed's secondary market corporate credit facility purchased hundreds of millions in corporate bonds in the energy sector, including from dirty polluters like ExxonMobil, Chevron, BP, and Marathon Oil right here in my district. So Professor Parsons, at this point, the Fed has been unwilling and unable to facilitate meaningful emergency assistance for states and local governments. How do you think our role as Congress should step in to fill this gap in fostering long-term investments in our communities? 